Mayor everyone, Dave Putz here from JKP Holdings. Alongside me, as always, Mr. Nathan Turner. Hello, hello. Hello. It's been a crazy uh, time. Uh, New Year's has approached us, and we're starting out 2023 in a little bit different way. I think uh, a lot of our angles have changed. Um, after the last month or so, we've been talking to a lot of different investors, different people inside the space, um, because we've been used to bank Virginia notes. Yeah, it's... That's again one of the cool things about this business is it's pretty easy to pivot. Uh, you can go from one thing to the next. There's so many different ways you can tackle notes uh, that it allows you to kind of change directions fairly quickly. And uh, and there are so many different directions you can go that it just gives you all kinds of opportunities, all kinds of options. It's great. So you know we got into this space years ago, and what we looked for was the opportunity to just invest and make money on our money. Um, I spoke to Rhea last night about, you know, landlording and, you know, the struggles with that and how this is similar to landlording with the idea of passive income and fix and flipping and renting and stuff like that. And one thing we focused on in our 12 plus years doing this is been bank originated, clean, nice paper um, and running on numbers. And I'm not sure how long ago we did a video with Tracy and we found how large this other world is um, of note investing or actually creating notes. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, you know, because when I started notes, my, my, the beginning of my note career was creating notes back in Columbus, Ohio. And it was, I actually really liked doing it. Uh, I, I stopped for a while because it was in 2012 and Dodd-Frank came into play and I couldn't find an RMLO. And so I, I knew that that was a thing and I knew that that was something that needed to happen, but I couldn't find one. So put that on pause, uh, which was totally fine. Like I say, you can pivot pretty easily. Yeah. Uh, but now we're kind of finding our way back that direction and okay. getting back into that seller finance world. Yeah, absolutely. And in the fact that when we hear this 30 billion originated, it's nuts. Yeah. Um, a year. Everyone jumping in here. A billion, like not million billion dollars of seller finance originated in one year. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's huge. So the, the, the opportunity there is massive. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we talk about this stuff, we're all about numbers and whatnot. And what we're finding out, you know, is that this world of seller finance doesn't have a good connection to the world of note buyers. And what we're realizing is that could we, basically do this in a way that it we can bridge a gap, basically fund them out and get let them keep going. And they're mm -hmm. happy to do that. So we have two groups of people joining us today. Um, unfortunately, Mark had an emergency hit, couldn't come. Um, but you know, what we're finding is we're going to bring the note buyers together with these originators and sellers of originated notes and let them know you can sell a note make a great return and go do it again. Yeah. You don't need yeah. the bank. You don't need anyone else. You can come to us. We'll buy you out. Getting into wraps, getting into all the kind of things. Um, and for these originators, we need to clarify to them, what kind of paper are you creating it? Are you doing it correctly? What are some of the gotchas that no buyers look for so you can refi out per se? And that's just it. You know, it takes me right back where when I first started originating paper, I, as I learned more, I learned how I was doing it all wrong. And I, I you know, had to make all kinds of adjustments and fix a bunch of things. Uh, and we're kind of finding that now, like people that are in that same boat where not necessarily they're doing it wrong, but for our purposes as node investors, uh, we need, we, we focus on different things and we need to have things lined up the right way uh, in case of whatever and, and just having clean paper that we can deal with for whatever it is we need to deal with it. Yeah. So when we got into this idea of originating notes, it was something I've never done before, right? And we're slowly learning what comes together with that so we can buy your paper. But what we want to lean on today is creating that paper, the legitimate paper, right? Um, but also on the flip side, making sure your numbers are built well enough into that note that when we make an offer, we're not going to scare you away. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. So um, like I said before, uh, we unfortunately, Mark had something he had to come up with, uh, but we do have Nick on here um, that, uh, you know, Nick has been someone that has been around the space for a long time. Uh, Nick's been someone that uh, I met years ago, didn't realize I did um, at no conference, um, but it, it, it's amazing where the connections come back. When we get on a phone call and you start talking about these things, we're in the same game as Nick is, which is really cool. And they're, his group of people and his Facebook group and everything else and us can build a huge bridge to connect everyone together, right? Do everything right over here. You can sell to us and refinance everything. So Nick, I appreciate you jumping on this morning um, and spend some time with us. Awesome. Um, and, and your knowledge and experience, not just only for us, which we're going to learn today, but also for how to create the notes to sell. Right. So can you give us a yeah. background of how did you get into real estate? Yeah. Well, that's well. You know, now it's funny because now the cool thing now the cool thing is to listen to the old guys, right? <laughs> so the old guys were around when the crap hit the fan in two thousand seven, two thousand eight. I would, I speak I speak a lot and I was at a I was at a uh, an event and there's maybe 300 people in it and I I asked the question I go hey who was around raise your hand if you were around in two, doing real estate not even notes just real estate in 2007 and you could count on two hands the number of people and I go that's the problem right it's not that there's a problem with being in real estate and there's a lot of things that I wish I had available then that I do now but you don't know what you don't didn't get the chance to experience I wish I could show you this picture. My literally, my dad sent me. This is hilarious. Uh, he sent me a clip. I got to read this to you because you guys will not believe this if I just said I, I don't want to. I don't mess this up. He sent me a clip from an article in the newspaper from two from nineteen ninety. Excuse me, nineteen eighty two. CD rates. CD rates. They, the 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 yield was fourteen percent. Holy cow! Fourteen percent. Can't make it up. I'm looking at it right here. Are wow. you kidding me? He goes, that was when I didn't have any money. When I, I mean, he goes, when it, when it used to be 18%, he said. Yes. I go, people don't read what that, this is where I'm trying to get to right now is that rates are not high guys right now. Nope. If you go back in history of time and you look at what mortgage rates have traditionally done, this is, this is only high relative to what we've been experiencing literally the last five or six years. Because in 2000, 2007, 2007, 2008, rates were probably even a little bit higher than they are still even right now. So the reason why I bring all this up is because you, like you said earlier, you have to be able to make a, a, a pivots and, ex, and changes. So when I, I first was in, I started out as a real estate investor. Okay. So I have the experience of being on the real estate side. And then I went to the dark side, which is what I call the notes. Right. So the notes, I started a company in 2012 with my partner, John Montero, a company called Rylex Capital, okay? And the whole point that we did, we, we built that business to sell and not from the, not that we knew that we were going to sell it, but we knew that if we used and implemented best business practices, then we would be, we, we it would it would benefit us regardless if we stayed in the deal or not. Well, fast forward to 2018, we actually ended up, and we were, this was a seller financing business, okay? It was creating, creating notes from scratch, buying properties, fixing them, selling them to owner finance buyers that were not uh, traditional bank borrowers. And we end up building this huge seller financing business, wrote hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of notes. And we end up selling that business to a literally a hundred year old federally chartered bank. Okay. So it was, uh, I joke about it because it was like a nine month proctology exam because I mean, if there's anybody that has more, um, uh, overhead and compliance issues and just regulations and regulators, it's the banking industry. So the reason why I bring this up is because I don't know everything about everything, but I do know that for us to be able to be successful and do what we did, do what we did, we had to know, I had a pretty good idea of what we were doing. And so as a result of that brings us to where we are to now today is where we have with the USA No Pro and the Creative Dealmaker on the teaching people how to do that same strategy. Right. Um, it allows us to create bank quality notes that other people just either don't know how to do or don't know where to go, right? So really, really important because when you look at that $30 billion 
market and industry that you, you talk about, which is all the notes that are created that aren't written by Bank of America or Wells Fargo or Chase or whoever. They're individuals, right? They're people that are listening to this call. They're, they're, they're mom and pops. They're one-offs. Now, I'm a professional note writer, and this is what I do, and there's other people that do it as well. But in that whole universe of the $30 billion, less than 5% of them do more than four notes a year, yeah. okay? So it's a very fragmented very fragmented business and industry. Well, the problem with it, in my opinion, is that people write all these notes, but they're just not well properly created, right? They're missing things. You know, we talk about this all the time when you go to, there's a lot of people that teach you how to go evaluate a note, mm -hmm. but very few that I know of at least that tell you how to structure it at a, at a bank quality level. So you, to your point, you can get maximum value because at the end of the day, let's be honest, do you want something that's shiny and new and you know it's going to perform or do you want something that's used and maybe it does and maybe it doesn't, right? That's why banks don't sell their notes a lot of times to people like you and me. No. Guess who buys them all? Fortune 500 companies, no. hedge funds, private equity groups, family offices, guys that buy you know, tens of millions of dollars of notes and they pay a premium for the paper. Yep. But why is that? It's because they're, it's all about asset preservation at, to some point. They don't want to manage a problem. Just like banks don't own real estate, they control real estate. They don't want to own it. Nope. 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 When it gets into the secondary market, the last thing they want to do is own it. They don't want to own the property. They just want the cash flow yep. from the note. And they, the want they want to lend. They just want to lend. They just want to be a lender. They just want to control. Now, there's people that will say, well, I can fix anything, so bring it on. Cool. There's a place for them in the world, too. But I'm going to tell you right now, the last thing I want to do is have to deal with a non-performing note or be or have to deal with the landlord, be a landlord or be a, you know, deal with a tenant. I don't want to do any of that stuff because that's a job. And I don't really, I'm not really looking for a job. So why did you start creating though? It's like, how did you go from the real estate? You know, that's a great question. I, you know, I always, I always get asked how we just got, in, how I got involved in this and how I got started. And, you know, it's been a long time now, man. I started this a long time ago. And um, it sort of was, I got a little bit lucky, I guess, to a certain extent, because I didn't understand amortization <laughs> back then. Yeah. yeah. I didn't understand why, but now I do. And once yeah. you understand how amortization works, and why banks do what they do, you go, holy crap, why would I want to ever be anything but a bank? Yeah. Honestly, 